Welcome back friends, welcome back to the homestead. Uh, another video moving on with the control box project for the automated greenhouse. I thought in this video we'll take a look, as I promised before, look at the circuitry and the kind of tools that I use to enable me to, to work out what does what. As you can see my desk is looking a bit chaotic, there's test rigs here and uh, 3D printed parts and, and all sorts of stuff anyway for future videos. So uh, I've started working out what's going to go in the box but um, before we get to that we need to do a circuit diagram um, and that's what I prepared for you today so I'll sort of walk you through um, that. Um, to do that we need to look at the screen so let's go and do that. Okay so um, just a bit of background first of all. My background's kind of into design so I use Adobe programs Obviously, I use it for editing the video and stuff like that. It's what I'm comfortable with. I totally appreciate there are specific programs out there for designing circuits and they might work better, but I'm comfortable with this and so I'm using this. You don't have to. Um, my first version of this um, control box, which you've seen in previous videos, I designed it on paper pretty much, pencil and paper. Um, this time with the additional complexity I wanted to do kind of a better job of it really and this obviously allows me to demonstrate it better as well rather than pointing you to a scrap of paper and stuff like that. So we've got two sheets here which I'll talk about the difference in a moment. Well what one basically is the 12 volt side and control you know the things that you're controlling these will be situated within the greenhouse and then the other side is the 5 volt side which is what's actually in the box. Having said that, of course this relay unit here sits in the box and has its outputs. It was difficult to know where to put this because this both, if you could argue that this can sit on this side and it can sit on this side as well and it does indeed sit on both sides. But for now because it's controlling the outputs um, in the greenhouse we'll keep it on this side so um, if you're not familiar with circuit diagrams this is pretty sta I, I have no background in electronics by the way um, having said that I did my apprenticeship fixing washing machines and I did go to college to learn microelectronics but I failed so um, take that what, with what you will um, but it's pretty standard practice is what I'm doing here. Uh, if you've got a little bit of inkling then you, you will know but basically obviously red is positive, black is negative or ground. And where lines cross they do not join unless there's a dot uh, to demonstrate a joint. Hopefully I've not missed any. Um, yeah so basically you've got 12 volt in here um, which is fuse, main power switch which comes in and then um, this we have some other switches as well which I'll explain there's a lot to explain here um, as far as the uh, I mean, most of it's controlled by the relays here the single toggle SPST uh, relays single pole um, single throw relays so yeah and then that that comes into the power unit which converts it to 5 volts and the 5 volts goes across the other side um, some things I wanted to point out really here um, and things that are different to the last time. So we've moved to using double pole, double throw relays for controlling the actuators which are uh, controlled by polarity. So we need to be able to switch the polarity. As I said before I'm not using H-bridges. I couldn't find any that would... Um, there was a risk with the current loading on them. Um, so I'm happy to agree the old-fashioned clicks with the relays uh, work, will work perfectly okay and these are seated into um, into seats so they're, they're you know we can easily unplug them and plug another one back in should one go. I want a way to override um, the control to make it clear I think um, I am using Home Assistant to, to visualize the data and so I can see it on the phone and send out messages through MPPT which I'll explain if you're not feeling with that in a separate video but I'm not using I'm not allowing Home Assistant to control everything this 
system needs to be able to work alone, sit alone. And if there's a power shortage and a network shortage or whatever it is, this needs to still continue and work on a standalone basis. And so most of the control is done by the ESP32 um, chip and not by Home Assistant. But I want the ability to manually override that if the box was to get something happen with the box. So uh, we have two different types of overrides. The relays need to be overridden um, separately or differently to the other devices such as fans and the pump. So in order to override the control of the windows and the flaps which control the ventilation we we must switch off power to the relays first and then take control separately because the relays obviously flip through their the power to the coils and i need to stop um so basically when the you know relays on the windows open when the relays off when power is off the re the windows close or the flap whatever it is 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 on off um and that is controlled by the power there so I need to be able to stop power from the relays and control it manually so we must switch off the power to the relays um, this relay these two relays here and these two relays up here which control these and then switch power independently to each actuator because of the switching of the polarity as opposed to something like the fan where there is no polarity switch it's either on or off and so we can just take a 12 volts from the main rail here as it were and push that through to the fan as opposed to the relay so we don't need to do you know the u -ret, there's that's the override as it were there just uh, sending power to the to the fan so that's a bit different um we have two power sources, one for each ESP. It's not on here, but um, I'm going to be, you know, this is the bare minimum sort of stuff for control, but I'm also for a bit of aesthetics. I'm going to have some nice fancy displays. And um, so they, they will be uh, working. Well, this will have an AC LCD display uh, as I previously mentioned to show data but the um, the running data of the of the ESP basically what's going on in the background recently you know whether it whether it believes things are working or not and then there will be a second ESP which will run some really nice um, displays with temperature and humidity and stuff like that some TFT displays which I'll demonstrate in a, in a separate video hopefully um, one thing I need to do while we're talking <coughs> is I've changed my mind about using valves. Um, didn't need a valve last year. I've decided I'm not going to use the misters because I've got a separate project in terms of this intake fan, which we'll be doing later in the year, but I'm going to build in for it now. Because of the intake fan pumping in hopefully cold air, I'm not going to be, hopefully will not need the misters. So I'm going to do away with the misters. In fact, I'll do that now while we're talking on the video. Um, and I'll maybe do a little um, sped up video of me removing it and changing the circuitry a little bit. Uh, that means I need, don't need to bridge the um, diodes to protect the current going the wrong way and I don't need, I need one less fuse as well which is good because I've only got an eight fuse holder. So uh, let's do away with the misters. Okay, so now we're back. Now, if I was using a circuit diagram kind of program, this would all the wires would automatically link and move about as I move the components. But um, I'm pretty quick with the using Illustrator, so I just do it like this. So that's done away with that. Now we only need one override, 
um, and we've saved ourselves some fuses and we've saved ourselves we've got a relay but I'm going to use that spare relay for something else later on um, for a future video as well so that's this side let's take a look at the other side um, if you've got any questions about this side then obviously leave them down in the comments below I will publish these as PDFs either on this video or when I publish the code uh, for the ESP32 with my full system I'm going to post it up to github um, for people to inspect um, is there anything else on this side other than there's going to be an internal cooling ventilation fan for the box itself as well as obviously the greenhouse ventilations which will always be on when the power on I don't think there's anything else really on this side to point out um, a lot of these components I did show on a previous video um, which I'll link to up here in the top corner as well so moving over to the ESP32 side itself so here we have all the um, control inputs and outputs for the development board um, and on what I've done this time is made sure that for the relays they're all on one side and all the sensors on the other side um, took a little bit of fiddling around but it did now in order to make sense of this what I've got is this which I think I showed in the previous video I've got this kind of data sheet which shows me what all the pins on the ESP32 will and won't do this looks a bit of a minefield at the moment but it's really helpful when you're planning out uh, basically what I did is I blocked off any pins each one of these is a pin each row um, and I blocked off the ones that I couldn't use and that had restrictions so black is you can't use at all gray is usable under certain circumstances um, for example this line and this line are the digital inputs which or outputs which I need for the LCD so I can't use those um, for normal um, GPIO um, and the so what's white are available um, some have a couple of conditions on them but basically these are available for any of the sensors um, any any of the outputs as well these are input only these four with the beige color but and then I've got a, a visual as well which is sort of a repeat of this but it's just handy to have it visually there um, but this is kind of my working model when I'm doing the uh, coding I use this and then once I've got this completed I then move over to this and plan it out visually for the wiring diagram so all your relays switching switching is on this side which comes over to here and these join up with the these here um, I've done away with 3 volt on this on the previous version I had a 5 volt bus and a 3 volt bus and it was just one extra layer of complexity that actually I didn't need um, because a soil moisture sensor will run up to 5 volts I was running on 3 before so we've got um, two DHT22s which are your temperature and humidity I'm gonna have one up high this one and one up low and one down low on the bed to measure a temperature and then I might want to do a some stuff with averaging for control but um, the high is the main one really then I've got a temperature sensor on the new intake fan to measure so we, we have an idea of how much cooler the air is when it's coming in and um, we have a door sensor to sensor over the door that's just simple read switch going in there and um, so there are, there are the sensors and also we've got a flow sensor now as well so we measure the input at the amount of liters per minute that the pump is pumping and going into the irrigation a couple of new things that I want to point out really uh, I'm going to make use of the reset button so um, for resetting I don't need to turn the power off or open the box I can just push a button and I've got a um, some nice buttons coming for that some um, these uh, momentary push buttons for a reset because uh, the ESP32 development board has a pin ready to, to let you do that uh, going to ground I missed my little dot there fix that 
and also I've got a Wi-Fi skip button. Uh, one of the issues I had last year, under certain circumstances, which I hope I've now alleviated, the the SP32 we get stuck in a loop of basically the code will not allow it to progress unless it connects to Wi-Fi. Obviously, to use Home Assistant is pretty important. It is connected to Wi-Fi, um, but it resets itself if it won't connect. And then, obviously, if the internet is down, the Wi-Fi, the router is down, um, power's off, whatever that, it won't be able to connect. For those of you who are watching this for the first time and don't know my setup, power comes from solar panels, so it's self self powered in the greenhouse, so we don't need to worry about main power to the house. But if main power to the house was down, Wi Fi wouldn't work and this would get stuck in a loop. So, what we can do, um, I've coded it now so it looks for a signal from this pin. If this signal is live, um, then by flicking this switch it will as part of the routine will skip the necessity to connect to wi-fi and it will skip anything to do with the wi-fi so the mqtt messages all that kind of stuff will all be skipped and it will still operate um, stand alone it will operate and and take control of the greenhouse so i thought that was a nice feature um, not an awful lot more on this side i've not uh, the LCD screen, which shows all the data, connects to these digital inputs and outputs here, the um, IC, ITC connections, which are 22 and 21, so they're marked on there. Um, I don't think there's anything else really on the side. You know, this is really a video about good practices in terms of planning and um, looking at the circuit diagrams. and gives you an opportunity to do things nice and neatly so um, hopefully when it comes to the actual physical wiring which is really next um, I won't need to think too much it's all here in front of me you know obviously I could do this during winter when I couldn't really do anything outdoors or whatever so it's all ready to go and in fact I've already sort of started that process as you saw at the start of the video so now I will be doing the wiring and connecting all this up and that will be uh, the next video. So I hope you found this useful in terms of the circuit diagrams. If you've got any questions about them, why have I done something a certain way, um, then I will, you know, do leave a comment below and I'll respond to them. Or if you think I've made a mistake somehow, um, then do point it out because it's not particularly my area of expertise. I've just something I've, I've learned over the years. Yeah. Um, that's it i think thanks for watching the videos um they do take a lot of time i put a lot of time and effort into learning all this stuff and you know making it presentable for you guys so um i, I do appreciate thumbs ups and comments and, and blah blah so thank you for that and thank you for watching and i'll see you on another video about automation very soon bye for now